And uh, I will just introduce our speakers. So I've got John McSweeney, who is the technical manager with Southern Response here with me tonight. And also Daniel Manchester, who is a quality manager with Aero. So I'm going to invite John up. Thanks, John. Thank you very much, Sarah. And uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome along to um, the presentation this evening. Um, what I'd just like to uh, start with is uh, just to uh, confirm a little bit about uh, Southern Response and uh, where we've come from. So uh, Southern Response is a gov government-owned company responsible for settling claims by the AMI policyholders uh, for the Canterbury earthquake damage which occurred prior to the 5th of April 2012. So that that covers most of those uh, earthquakes during 2010 and 2011. But Southern Response was formed on the 5th of, Jan 5th of April 2012. Uh, so any earthquake that occurred prior to that is a Southern Response uh, responsibility. Now Southern Response have engaged Arrow International as our building partners to manage the building and repair program for us. Um, and Southern Response and Arrow work together to get you back home. We are separate companies, but uh, we work very closely together, we share premises, and uh, our staff all work hand in hand together to assist those customers that are over cap get their homes repaired or rebuilt. The team that we have at uh, Southern Response is a what we call a dedicated claim specialist, and that's the key contact person to keep you informed and answer any questions that you've got regarding your claim or your policy or the repair process. Uh, they're a Southern Response employee, and that person is supported by, the project, by a project manager from Arrow International who will guide you through the design, the consenting, and the construction phases of any repair or rebuild work that uh, occurs to your home. Now behind the scenes, both in Southern Response and Arrow, we've got a very substantial team of additional support people to um, guide and um, manage all of those processes that are necessary to get through, uh, ultimately to consent and then into construction for you. Now some of the things that we've got to assist you, uh, we've got some documentation and I've got some examples here tonight of what we call a repair pack. This is, the, this is what we call the repair pack that we give to our rebuild and repair customers. It's, a, it's basically a container that you can use to keep all the documents that come in relation to your repair. So any information you get, any um, booklets or other information that's sent, you've got somewhere where you can file it all together. So we give you one of those. Uh, and we have just introduced reasonably recently what we call a repair map. And this is available both on the website and uh, in hard copy like this. And what we've done here is outline the steps that we go through to effect a repair to your home until it's completed. Uh, in the past, what we were tending to do is identify that there's some damage to your home and we'd do all the analysis and work it out, uh, offer to repair it, and at the very end of the process say, well, actually, would you like to cash it out and manage the repair yourself or do something else? So what we've done now is that we've identified through the process three major decision points. We're going to do this part of the analysis, and there's a cash-out opportunity if you wish to take advantage of that. No, you'd like to continue through the Arrow Managed Repair. We can go to the next stage, it's more information, it's getting uh, all the technical work done, um, maybe uh, up to the consent phase, and then you've still got that opportunity to uh, cash out if you wish. That document is also supported by what we call our From Here to Home booklet. Now this is basically a manual that's got all the information that you need to know about the processes involved in organising and then effectively, eventually getting a repair done to your home. Um, that's available as well. And we've also just recently introduced this other one called Shared Property. Now this is specifically for those units that are in a cross lease, a body corporate, or where there are two units co-joined together. They've got their own different um, challenges and requirements. So there's some specific information 
related to those shared properties. And uh, those documents sort of all work together. So they are available and uh, hopefully that they, they will be of assistance to you. In addition, and we've got some examples down the back of the room, we've got uh, what we call repair fact sheets, general um, questions and information that's available to you, and that also is also available on the website. Um, one of the other issues, one of the other initiatives that we've got is what we call the customer portal. Now this means that it's basically an online tracking system that if you are choosing to take up the offer of an arrow managed repair uh, or a rebuild, you can watch uh, or log in, you'll apply and you'll be given a password and an access key to uh, go online and have a look at the various steps that your particular repair process is going through for the, um, for the repair. There are a lot of tasks and a lot of steps that are involved in that process and it's quite surprising when you see them all laid out there. It's based on a traffic light system of those that haven't been done yet, those that have been completed and those that are in progress. So you can see where your particular um, repair is going through that process. And uh, uh, another initiative that we have is a little, um, a little uh, tool called Rover. And uh, Rover is a radio-controlled, multi-terrain miniature robot. It's got a high-definition cameras on it. It's got a microphone and very powerful LED lighting banks. And this al allows our team to survey the area beneath the, beneath the houses. We didn't have it in the beginning. Um, and Rover, we've got a little video to show you of it in operation um, shortly. Uh, it was developed in Christchurch between Southern Response, Arrow and Canterbury University. They jointly helped develop it and it's a little six-wheeled vehicle. And it goes under the floor of those houses that are on piles. So if your house is on piles and there's that space under there, um, this is where Rover can go in and we've got an operator that uh, controls that to look and identify and record damage. And uh, the other thing that we've got is some uh, online videos that are available. We have produced uh, a number of informative videos and uh, they are online on our website as well. So you're able to have a look at those. That's just a little photo of Rover, the little, uh, the little vehicle that can go under, um, under the floor of houses. Um, what we predominantly use that for is, first of all, identifying damage, having a look to see if there's any damage underneath a house. And once repairs have been completed, we can go back and check and give you a record of what was done so that you can see that the um, work was done as specified and has been done properly. And as a homeowner, you can have a copy of the photos or the video that was taken as, uh, as your record as well. Um, we've also, um, we didn't have it in the beginning, uh, and a number of houses were repaired when we didn't have that facility. So what we're doing now is we're going back, getting in touch with the homeowners, and going back and just checking what was supposed to be done under those under the piles and under the floor of those houses has actually been done. So that again gives comfort to yourselves as homeowners and us that the work has been done properly and you've got a record of it. The, um, we call this whole program a, a project, the repair of Southern Response, um, repair of uh, houses uh, for our, our customers in conjunction with Arrow as our project partner. Health and safety is a very, very important part of our, um, of our project. Um, perhaps health and safety hasn't been a high priority in sort of residential repairs in the past. They certainly haven't been on the scale that we've had over the last uh, four or five years. So health and safety is very important. We put a lot of emphasis into that through our own staff and our contractors, and Arrow manage that uh, extensively on our behalf. Um, I think you'd all appreciate that if uh, somebody is uh, working on or around your house, we don't want any accidents that happen um, while they're on your home or on our project. So we do place a high emphasis on that. Um, very important also is the quality of work. 
and we've got a number of things that Daniel will go through to show how we monitor the quality of the work that has been done, and Rover is another example of that. We also are very focused on getting your claims settled. Southern Response's philosophy, being a government-owned uh, company, is to offer the repair or rebuild of your home, to actually undertake the repairs rather than just at this point simply offering a cash settlement. We are offering to do the work and um, get the house repaired if you wish us to do so. It's an option. Uh, it's an offer to you. So uh, we're very focused on getting that settled and that the work and the solution, the repair solution that we offer, falls in line with the entitlement under your policy. To that end also, we're uh, conscious that we're not looking for the cheapest job, we're looking for quality work with quality contractors, uh, and we monitor those contractors very carefully to ensure that they are delivering quality work, um, and uh, we will pay fair market rates for that work to be done. And uh, we have um, a number of contractors on our uh, books that we've got access to that are providing and are delivering that quality work. And uh, unfortunately, we have, we have to monitor that very carefully. And uh, if a particular contractor isn't performing and giving us the quality of work to our customers' homes that we require, uh, we will gauge another contractor. So that's um, where we uh, are up to at the moment. So I'll just now pass over to Daniel. He'll be able to go through the... Uh, Daniel is with uh, Arrow International, and he'll go through the uh, quality aspect of the project. Daniel. Thank you, John, and thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, my part tonight, I'll be briefly going through our quality management framework, which is our way of setting expectations with the contractor, but also following them up and making sure they're completed. Because we're doing um, construction, we are governed by New Zealand law and the building regulations, um, contracts that we have to have in place with our suppliers and workers and also with the actual individual jobs. Um, and the quality management framework, that fits into the side as it, um, it goes above and beyond the requirements. Um, I mentioned earlier today that comparing to the Auckland um, market. There are a lot of contracts going on um, with an individual building, but there is no um, individual over company overseeing. With the benefit and the with the Southern Response Arrow project, is you have us keeping an eye on those contractors and making sure things are done right. This is the hierarchy. So we are governed by law and the building regulations. This is what defines the New Zealand building industry. Um, sets out functional requirements and the performance requirements for any building that is constructed in New Zealand. Now, this will be specifically tailored towards uh, new builds, um, and this has been in place for many years. And with the earthquake repair work, um, that is something that's been put in place, obviously, in the last four and a half years. And it's been a work in progress that the likes of NBIE, New Zealand Standards, have all been working towards a, um, a good quality product. Relationship agreements. So before, this is how Southern Response, Arrow, the co contractor, and especially you, the customer, um, are all involved with each other. Um, it sets out how we um, conduct our business and takes care of your consumer rights. Build contract, any consented project in New Zealand requires a build contract. It's an individual, um, there's certain uh, project specifications, designs, and consented documents, or the plans, um, and a disclosure form. Um, that go towards a build contract. This is a legally binding document. We cannot, the, and the contractor cannot write themselves out of their requirements in this. And lastly, our quality management framework. This is a set of our, our own documents that we use to communicate our expectations with the contractor, but it's also as well as our way of documenting that we're following it up and making sure it's happening. So the first part is quality assurance. That's us setting our expectation to the contractor. And the second part is quality control. That's making sure it happens. So we're measuring, we're measuring the contractor themselves before they even start the job and also on site. We're measuring it against their trade criteria and also um, the plans and um, specifications we have on site. And lastly is the output and that's how we're gauging um, the work is being completed and also how the contractors are interacting with us. So the contractor evaluation, before a contractor is even invited into our project, or especially to start repairs or rebuilding your home, 
they have to meet certain obligations that were set. We're asking them to achieve zero defects. We want when they finish that job or finish your property that you can move in and it's a well-built home. It's across the portfolio. That means every single project that we complete in Arrow is, meets the same requirements. And we've got good quality indicators and it's across all work streams. We do work on re repairs, rebuilds, multi-units, um, even the out-of-scope work when it comes to the likes of driveways and pathways. So the good trade criteria. This is how we are gauging our contractors. So health and safety is very important to us. If a contractor is looking after his staff and making sure they're working properly, nine times out of ten they're doing a good job in quality as well. And the other part is we want our guys to go home to their families and also come back and do, do work the next day. The site management, we're expecting well looked after sites and well planned. The documentation is a legal requirement. Uh, the continuity of subs, so we're wanting them to make sure that the guys that they have working for them are good quality guys as well. Uh, we've got council inspections and John's already spoken about the rover. And another important one that we're trying to help the contractors with is the relationship with the homeowner, or yourselves. Um, contractors, by and large, it's not their forte to be um, communicative or um, forefront, so we're, we're, making, we're helping them out, having discussions with you before there's a problem rather than an argument at the end of it. Making, you know, sorting out the issues and making forward to a good quality project. Uh, outstanding CANS, sorry for the acronym, but that's a corrective action notice. That's our way of, if we've seen something wrong on site, we've then made sure that it's been followed up and taken care of. And timeliness and build quality and completion planning. So we're making sure that the contractors are actually planning forward. No one goes out and plans to do a bad job, but there are a lot of people who don't plan to do, to plan, uh, sorry, who don't plan to avoid it. So for each pro property that we repair or rebuild, we've got an individual score sheet. So we're, we're gauging the contractors on how well they did that job. And it's also part of every progress claim. Uh, we've got criteria. It's a simple yes or no, do they meet the criteria that we've set? And once again, the can. So if it meets a certain criteria or we're not happy with the way things are going, we issue them a formal notice to make sure it's followed up. And it's our way of accurately evaluating our contractors. So site quality. This, this is where hammer meets the nail, or any other analogy you want to grab, but it's where we're checking that the work has been completed properly, and we're making sure it's done before we pay them. We're not going to pay for bad work. So, like it says there, if it does not pass, we do not pay. And the squint is a site-specific quality management plan. This is something that's been evolving throughout the project. Originally it was it followed the council inspections and documentation process, and it was the contractor owned. So they made sure that the work they were doing and we reviewed it ourselves to make sure it was appropriate. As part of um, the evolution of the project, we're now moving more into um, check sheets. These are specific requirements that we meet, uh, that the contractors have to meet and we gauge them by. It's, like we said, it's part of every progress claim and it's a criteria whether it's met or not met. This is a quick example of the form that the guys fill out when they're on site. So it's very simple and it's very quick for their line manager to assist them in following issues. And the last one is corrective notices. This is when th we always want things to go right, but it, as life will tell us, it doesn't. So for us, we've set up a formal method of notifying the contractor that we're not happy with what's gone on site. We're setting an expectation of when we want that sorted out and to what quality we want it done. Um, and this also assists them with their subcontractors or people they have employed as well. Changes to the building industry that have happened recently, one of the most important ones is a 12 month defects, defects period. So with one, in one year um, from the completion, if there's any defects that you find, you have to notify your contractor um, or the builder. Um, right, John, that's Southern Response as well? Yes. Yep. So as long as you notify one of the three of us, um, we'll, we'll be ensuring as Arrow to make sure that someone goes out and rectifies that issue. That's something that they have to do if it's been notified by. Um, and if they don't do it within a timely fashion or it causes um, additional damage, they could be liable for sorting that out as well. For example, if it's a leak in the roof and they don't sort it out quickly, they may have to sort out the, and pay for the issues that it's caused, the damages that it's caused. But it does not apply to all situations. You do have to remember it does not include willful damage um, or if the home, the house has been neglected. There are um, requirements um, within looking after your house. Um, but you also have to notify the contractor, Arrow, or Southern Response as soon as you notice there's something wrong. Um, because if, you, if the issue happens in, let's say, January, and you don't notify anyone until June, that damage that's caused up until June may not be covered or um, the contractor's responsibility. 
So that's where we want you to keep your communication going with the contractor and us so we can help you out and get that sorted for you. This is the Rover video. Assessing earthquake damaged foundations can be complicated. The University of Canterbury, with funding from Southern Response, have developed Rover, a remote controlled robot with the ability to inspect and record earthquake and land damage under your house. Rover has been designed to fit into small and confined spaces that people cannot access, making it safer to inspect quake-damaged buildings. Underfloor investigations are now both thorough and efficient. Coming through here, Brian, we'll uh, show you some of the damage. Yep. Southern Response will call you to book in a suitable investigation appointment and would like you to be home for the inspection. The investigation will last about an hour and a half and is done by an Arrow project manager who will require full access to any earthquake damaged areas. Rover has an onboard light, stills camera and high definition video camera so the operator can identify and measure any damage found under your house. Controlled using a joystick, Rover can capture any foundation movement, cracks, bending or shifting in the foundation walls. The condition of piles and other structures beneath the house are also recorded and are displayed in real time on a handheld computer screen. Any ground condition damage such as liquefaction, ground creaks or sinkholes are documented so Southern Response can determine the causes of any movement. This information will help them decide the best way to fix your house. Rover, an industry initiative, a local University of Canterbury solution helping Canterbury recover. Good, I hope you found that interesting. And we've got a number of those little Rover, Rover modules and um, just for interest, that sinkholes were mentioned, and sometimes a uh, rover might fall over and get stuck. We've got a rescue rover can go in and rescue it, so it's really good. Um, what we'd like to move now to are some uh, frequently asked questions that had come in uh, prior to the seminar, so we'd just like to uh, go through those. The first one is, what happens when everything on the scope isn't repaired? Now, your contract covers the scope of what is to be repaired, and Southern Response and the Builder are a party to the contract as well as the homeowner. And that includes all the plans and specifications and all work stated in the contract must be complete before Southern Response will pay the builder in full. And this is where we rely on um, the contractor's project manager as well as Arrow's project manager to ensure that all of the work that is supposed to be done has been done. Next question is, what happens when more damage is found during the repair? Now, a project manager will come and assess the damage, and if the damage is earthquake related, it will be accepted as a fair and reasonable variation from the builder, and the work will be included as additional scope. And just in addition to that question, some customers are choosing to what we call cash out and manage their own repair. Now there is a little bit of a risk in doing that if the, um, you get paid for the damage that was identified. You commence that repair work and again find unseen damage, that's earthquake damage. In the contract we have what we call a, a comeback clause so that if you're managing it yourself and additional damage is identified within 12 months of signing the cash out contract, we will off, we will come and do the same thing there and do a variation to your contract to cover that additional earthquake damage that was identified. What are the industry standards? Expected standards. Now we must meet and our contractors must meet the current building code standards and as discussed just before with Daniel, we monitor the prog progression of the job to ensure that these standards are met. The next question, what quality control standards are in place? And as discussed above too, we have a quality management framework to control our standards and any further questions regarding this can be made to your project manager or your Southern Response Claim Specialist. And who's responsible for making good any bad repairs? Well there are three parties to the contract, the Southern Response, the builder and yourself as the homeowner. Any repair that is not to standard will be assessed by a project manager 
and the builder will remedy any work that is necessary and we will arrange for that to be done on your behalf. What happens when the repair deteriorates over times and deadlines? We use the MBIE, that's the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, Guide to Tolerances, Materials and Workmanship in Residential Construction 2015 as the base guidance document. That sets the standards. Uh, what assurance is in place to stop builders walking off the job? Now, the builder signs a legally binding contract. If the work is incomplete, under law, they will be asked to complete that work. If the builder fails to complete unfinished works, Southern Response will engage another builder to do this. Um, we do do a very rigorous check of uh, build contractors before we engage them. Uh, but unfortunately, we have had some experiences of that for some, with some of our customers. Now, Southern Response looks after you and takes over the job and arranges for, additional, for a different contractor to come and complete it. It's um, a reasonably complex process. Um, we want to ensure that all the warranties and guarantees that are there will transfer from the original contract to the new one. So it's not some something that uh, is, is easily done, so we want to make sure that uh, the contractors that we employ for your home repairs uh, is of good a quality as we can get. For further ongoing reassurance, Arrow have a strict criteria when, when engaging a builder, so just what I was referring to earlier, based on financial stability, build capacity, the health and safety program and quality assurance of their work. Your project manager oversees the job and has checks in place to ensure that quality of workmanship throughout. From 1st of January 2015, you are better protected. There is what Daniel was referring to, the automatic 12-month defect period where the builder must fix any defects from, from construction that are found within that period. And uh, I might like to just add in um, there, Daniel, that uh, that actually is not just a 12-month warranty, it's it's longer than that. Would just like to comment about that, please? So that 12-month period is a notification period where the builder must return um, to investigate the defect. Um, and I'll try and re remember the, the wording, but as they, if it's a defect, um, they have to prove it's not their workmanship. Otherwise, by law, they have to re re remedy it. Um, but you're also uh, covered by any implied warranties. So all products that um, are installed into your property have an implied warranty. These should be at least 10 years, because that's, when the, that's how long the builder has to stand behind his work. Um, trade organisations like master builders and certified builders are supporting these guys and making sure that the products that they're purchasing to put in your property meet that 10-year guarantee as well. Um, Sorry, yep, some things will be a bit longer. Uh, roof, roofs may be 15 to 25 years, depending on which product is installed. Um, but those are what's covered in your implied warranties and guarantees. And they are what we're going to try and supply to put in your, um, your, your pack. So they're there for you, um, you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the track that you can refer back to them as to how your property um, should be maintained. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so you don't need, as a homeowner, you don't need to deal with the builder directly. Uh, your claim specialist at Southern Response uh, will just let them know and detail any problems that you've got and uh, we'll take it from there. The Aero project manager will assess the defects and liaise with your builder to rectify these. So we look after that aspect for you. Now, um, unfortunately, sometimes things don't quite go right. So we do have a complaints process um, in place and the first person, the main contact that you've got is your claim specialist, your Southern Response claim specialist. Um, we are in fact embarking on employing uh, more people in this role so that uh, we'll be better able to represent you as homeowners uh, having repairs that are being done and if uh, there's uh, no satisfaction there you can write to what is called our technical review team where they'll be able to review any issue that you raise. Um, our PO box, we've got a PO box of 9052, uh, we've got an 0800 number, 0800 501 525 and there's a website where all of that same information is on the website and available to you as well. 
There is also external expertise available, um, and in particular, um, the Residential Advisory Service, which is a free service to you and uh, is uh, very, very worthwhile if you've got any issue or any concern or any questions that you'd like to uh, ask from an independent, um, from an independent organisation. And as well, there is the Insurance and Savings Ombudsman Scheme uh, that is available for uh, any uh, formal dispute or uh, issue that you have. And uh, that's again a free service to policyholders. So those are the, um, the uh, services that are available to you if anything goes wrong or you've got any questions. The Residential Advisory Service is based here in Christchurch, so they're very accessible and uh, very easy to get hold of. So that's the uh, conclusion of the formal part of the presentation.